Good afternoon. Our honor is very great today. We have had almost as a miracle, you might say, come across the path of freely speaking, Mr. Ahmed Didat. Mr. Ahmed Didat is very famous in his own world, and if you don't already know him, I hope he will soon be very famous in yours. He is a Muslim. His title of the lectures that he is going to do, and the not really debates, but the discussions with people here in Geneva, are Christianity and Islam, Christ in Islam, and the Prophet of Islam and the Bible. Now, we are doing this interview. It is both filmed and it is on audio tape. We are doing this on the 16th of March, 1987, for any information or dating that you might want to know before it or after it. And the, the events that will bring Mr. D. Dot closer to you than this interview are going to be on Tuesday, the 17th of March, 1987, at the University in Geneva, on Wednesday, the 18th of March, in Uni 1 at the Aula B106, and the Prophet of Islam and the Bible, Thursday, the 19th of March, at 8 p.m., Uni 1, Hall B106. So that having that out of the way, because I know the, the uh, interest that you will show to this, let me then welcome, with a very warm spiritual greeting, our friend Ahmed Didat. Thank you very much, ma'am. Now, of course, when I tell the people where you're from, yes, it's going to be a big shock, and they think we're going to talk politics. Yes, Mr. D-Dot is from South Africa. Now, we are not going to dwell on that subject in politics really today, but I do think for our beginning, we'd like to know what brought you to South Africa yes, and how was your religious background developed in that country? Yes, ma'am. See, I was born in India, and in 1927, my father, who had pr proceeded to South Africa, he called me so that I can obtain better education and better means of livelihood. And since 1927, up to date, most of my life I spent in South Africa. And your, uh, how many Muslims are there in South Africa? We are about half a million Muslims there. Mm -hmm. About half of these half a million, they originate in the Far East, and the Far East meaning Indonesia and Malaysia, and the other half originate in the Indo-Pakistan subcontinent. This is about the half a million Muslims. It's a quarter million from the Far East and quarter million from the, uh, what you would say, India, Pakistan. Now, uh, Mr. D. Dot, I understand that when you talk about people like Bishop Mokwena, who represents four and a half million black uh, Christians, you talk about Bishop Barnabas... Uh, Tutu? Who, no, no, not no. Bishop Tutu. Uh, the bishop who has the three million people oh, that comes at Easter, Barnabas... Zion, the Zion, Barnab Christian, Church. Zion Christian Church. Yes. And then you have all of the churches represented by the World Council of right, Churches. Right. Then you have the white Afrikaner churches, right. those on the far right. Yes. Then you have Afrikaner churches to the center and to the left. Yes. You have every other kind of religion. I yes, know some metaphysicists. Yes, yes ma'am. Where do your Muslims fit into all of that potpourri yes, of religious feeling? Yes. You see, now the Muslims, he stands out in this, that his religion makes him opposed to apartheid. Mm -hmm. We're artificially you're creating standards, false standards of judging people. Mm -hmm. Because the only standard the Muslim believes that God accepts is your behavior. The Quran tells us, Ya Yuhannas, mean all mankind, Inna khalaknakum min zakarim wa unsa. So most certainly he has made you all of a single pair, a male and a female. Wa ja'allakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila. And it is he who has made you into nations and tribes. Purpose behind it? It says, Lita Arafu, that ye may recognize one another. This Mr. John is a Frenchman. This Mr. Jan John is a Swiss. This Mr. John is, uh, so for the purpose of recognition, these are convenient labels. And the only valid standard of judging one another is, the Quran says, Inna akaramakum in dallahi atkakum. So most certainly, the noblest in the sight of God is he who is the best in conduct. Not black or white, not rich or poor, but the best in conduct. This is the standard, and the standards by which we are being judged in South Africa is totally opposed to our standards. Now, uh, last question on that subject. 
Is there any one of those religious groups anywhere on either side of any color line that has members of it that are all perfect, that are not showing any form of discrimination, perfect is a silly word, that are not showing any form of discrimination or not being political in a bad way about their things? Has anyone found the real truth of the truth? Well, I can't seem to see a single church or denomination that, you know, uh, practices altruistically, you know, these true standards. They have what you would say, uh, conveniently at times, they broadcast that this cathedral is now open to all races at all services. But for 300 years they didn't do that. It's out of certain, I feel, uh, reasons best known to themselves, for, for political ends, mm -hmm. that uh, the African, the black man is becoming conscious, becoming more and more aware about these discriminations uh, by the churches themselves. The churches themselves, you know, those who claim to be very broad-minded, they have been discriminating themselves. For example, for 300 years, we never had a black bishop in the country, not Anglican, not Roman Catholic. But now, all of a sudden, you have Bishop Tutu, you know, he's an Anglican bishop. We have a, a Bishop Zulu, he's a Zulu bishop. How did it come about? For 300 years, you couldn't produce one. So no, I think there are other reasons then, uh, altruistically, religious standards by which they are working. And so can anybody can go to a mosque on any... Mosque, anybody, black, white, there is no discrimination whatsoever. Even today with all the people talking about... Uh, but you, you know, have to be Muslim. Uh, you no, have to be no, Muslim. even non-Muslims. You in don't the, have to be in Muslim. The mosque, the mosque that uh, I'm one of the guides in, uh -huh. in, in the mosque in Durban, and we get about more than 12,000 tourists a, 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 a month. You know, of, really? I didn't of know the that. Jews and the Christians, you know, people coming from all over the world, they come along. And one of the most important places that people do visit in Durban is the mosque, the largest mosque south of the, uh, south of the equator, happens to be in Durban. And these people come along and they're most welcome, you know, whether they are Christians or they're Jews or they're atheists or agnostics, everybody is welcome. And we welcome them and we explain to them what goes on and we give them free literature on Islam and they go away happy, 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 you know. It makes us happy to welcome everybody. Now, Mr. Ahmed Didat, we have explored your background in South Africa, where you've come from, and uh, we are now very interested in the fact that I have heard that you are one of the most, um, how do you, not advanced, deepest, uh, best, what is the adjective? that you know as much about the Christian religion and Bible and as much about Judaism as you do about Islam, and that your, your message is not to be divisive, yes. but to point out what's good. Let me yes. just ask you, yes, speak to us. Where do you find this healing force? You see, our belief is that the, the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims, you know, in the origin, these three religions are Semitic religions, and they have a common background in Father Abraham. The Jew respects Father Abraham, the Christian respects him, and the Muslim respects him. And we all claim a common heritage coming from Father Abraham. And I believe that it is the same religion. You see, whether you call it Judaism, Christianity, or Islam, to me, these are not three separate religions. It is the same religion on different levels. The titles were given by man with regard to the term Judaism. Because I've been asking Jews, Jewish learned men, that this word Judaism, is it to be found in the Torah? They says no. As, is it in your Talmud? He says no. Is it in your Mishnah? He says no. And say, so where did you get it? Most of them are puzzled. Where did the word Judaism originate? As is Christianity, is this in the Bible? Any Bible? Does it speak that the religion preached by Jesus Christ was Christianity? No. Says, where does this term come from? The very first time the word Christian was used, we read in the New Testament, was at Antioch, when the enemies of the followers of Jesus, disparagingly they pointed to them, saying that these are Christians, meaning the worshippers of Christ. But Christ never heard the word Christian, and Christ never heard the word Christianity. And I go beyond, and I say, Christ never heard the word Christ in his lifetime. Be but didn't he say, uh, I and the Father are, are one, one yes. and therefore doesn't that mean in Judaism, me talking about this, but doesn't that mean that 
if I and the Father are one, that that spirit is imminent in me and that therefore he would be the Christ or he, that he would acknowledge himself as being the Christ uh, that were foreseen by the Jews? How am I doing, Mother? <laughs> yeah. No, Christ, you see the term Christ, it comes from the word Messiah, the Hebrew yeah. word Messiah. The Hebrew word Messiah, Arabic, Masih, is the same word.